In this video, we're gonna tile weld, grind, heat treat, and hand sand our 12 inch Bowie knife blade named Luminous. To catch you up, I've already forged quite a bit on the Mosaic Damascus and have it ready to be nine weighed. The nine way will make it so the pattern on the end is multiplied times nine. Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shot. No, just kidding. Knife Maker Plus is the sponsor of this video. It's our own creation that we pour our heart and souls into and I'm actually really, really bad at selling things, uh, but I really enjoy making knives and I feel like I'm pretty good at it. I enjoy making YouTube videos and making courses, but I'm really bad at selling those. So go check out Knife Maker Plus. We begin by prepping our nine way billet. A little Starbond CA glue holds all the pieces in place so I can MIG weld them together. Once the ends of our nine way are welded with the MIG welder, I then go to the TIG welder to seal up all the sides. I'm using a low temperature and no filler so I don't get any foreign material in my finished billet. It's time to get this billet heated up to about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit and forge welded into one solid piece instead of nine bars. After the billet's forge welded, I can focus on drawing the billet out longer. We'll be tile welding this billet to transfer the pattern from the end of the bar to the sides of the blade. Once the billet has cooled, I grind all the scale off and start cutting our tiles. I cut each tile on a 35 degree angle and we'll probably need about six or seven for this buoy. Next up is to clean up each of the tiles. I start out on the two by 72 and then go over to the surface grinder in order to make them all pretty much the same size. They're close, but I wanna get them a little closer. After surface grinding, I take all the tiles back to the Broadbeck two by 72 to get a 120 grit finish on all the mating surfaces. I first TIG weld all the tiles to a thin piece of sheet metal. And once that's done, I TIG weld another piece of sheet metal to the other side to make a tile mosaic sandwich. The sheet metal will help seal up the entire billet for our zero atmosphere forge welding. It also acts as a sacrificial material. As I'm forging the billet out, you normally lose a fair amount of steel to scale and stuff falling off. Well, instead of losing our precious mosaic, now we'll just be losing the mild steel. And by time the billet's forged out, that mild steel will be completely gone and won't even have to really worry about grinding it off. Once the mosaic is drawn out to the proper length, I can then grind all the MIG welds off the edges of the billet. I don't want those MIG welds to get smashed into the billet, so before I start forging on the edge of the bar, I need to make sure those are completely ground out. Since this is a mosaic Damascus, I'm not gonna forge the blade to shape very much, just a little bit. The reason for that is the mosaic Damascus could get really distorted if I forged it the same amount that I would on, let's say a plain carbon knife. This buoy is gonna be a frame handle construction with a pommel nut on the end. So we need a long skinny tang to go all the way through the handle. Once the blade's forged out and our tang is forged out, it's time to get this blade normalized. To normalize the blade, I'll heat it up to 1600 degrees, air cool, 1500 and then air cool, and then a final cycle of 1400 and let it air cool. Normalizing the blade will leave the steel in a good state for later on when we need to harden the blade. The blade's been normalized, it's time to start grinding on the blade. First, I grind the scale off with the angle grinder, and then I flatten one side of the blade a little bit on the two x 72 and then move to the surface grinder to get everything perfectly flat and parallel. I set the broad back up horizontally and profile the blade.
After profiling the blade, I begin grinding in the blade bevels. Right now, the blade is a soft piece of mosaic Damascus steel. It's time to transform it into a hard, usable blade. Call me John the Baptist because I'm about to baptize this thing with fire and oil. I'm going to heat this blade up to 1525 degrees in my Paragon kiln and then quench it in 100 degree Parks 50 oil. I move the blade up and down while it's in the oil in order to get a good quench. If I don't move the blade, you might end up with places in the blade where it's thicker that don't fully harden and that would show up in the final blade after we etch it and wouldn't look good at all. Normally my oil doesn't catch on fire, but I was a little slow getting my blade into the oil so it caught on fire and I kind of burned some of the hair on my arm. I checked to see if the blade hardened with a file and sure enough, it got very hard. Off camera, I tempered the blade at 425 degrees for two hours. After the blade has been tempered at 425 degrees, I begin surface grinding the ricasso and any flat areas just to get them cleaned up. Once that's done, I move on to the final bevel grinding. I also need to straighten the blade a little bit. It warped during heat treat, so I use some heat with the torch to pull the blade straight. Now I'm working on the convex grind. I need to do this so we can sharpen the blade and do a performance test on it and make sure it holds up well. I chop through a two x four twice, going through a couple of knots as well. I wanna make sure the blade edge holds up with no chipping and no rolling. If the edge chips, then the blade might be too hard. And if the edge rolls over, then it might be too soft. It passed the performance test, so we can keep going with the grinding now. One of the most difficult parts of the blade to grind is the plunge area. That's where the blade bevel meets the ricasso. I'm using a special platen I made that hooks up to my broadback grinder. That allows me to grind the plunge grind area and get absolutely perfect plunge grinds with the exact same radius in each one and get them perfectly lined up. At this point, the majority of the grinding is done and I'm just trying to get the blade bevels up to a 320 grit finish. It's time to get the sandpaper out and do some serious hand sanding. This 12 inch blade is gonna require quite a bit. I start out with 320 grit wet dry sandpaper and then move up to 600 grit. We still have grinding left to do on the spine of the blade, the ricasso and the clip, but I like to get the blade bevels hand sanded to 600 grit at this stage. That allows me to keep all those lines extra crisp. Once the blade bevels are sanded to 600 grit, I begin focusing on the tang and the ricasso. I mill the sides of the tang so I can fit my guard up later. I only mill a couple thousandths of an inch off of the sides of the tang. This will allow me to get a perfect guard fit. At the same time, we're keeping the tang nice and strong because we're not removing very much material at all. And once that's done, it's time to put my mark on the world, or at least this blade anyway. I'm using a stencil, a Variac controller, and a full wave bridge rectifier to electrochemically etch my maker's mark onto the Ricasso. I go over the stencil many times with the electrode. That'll leave a mark that's about 15 to 20 thousandths of an inch deep. a little neutralizer on the mark after I'm done etching it the depth I want. That stops the electrolyte from etching my blade any further.
It's finally time to start grinding in the clip. I'm a little apprehensive to grind this clip because I know it's gonna be a lot of work. This clip goes along the curved area of the blade and it also goes along the spine for a good distance. So in a way, it's kind of like grinding two clips. I decided to set up a work rest on the grinder so I could hold a nice consistent angle as I grind the clip on each side. I first wanna focus on grinding the part of the clip that goes along the spine of the blade. And once that's complete, I can then focus on the curved part of the clip. I'm using the angle finder to make small adjustments to the angle of my work rest. This allows me to regulate how far the clip comes down the blade and how big the clip is. This clip has an abrupt stop on the spine of the blade and I want that abrupt stop to line up perfectly on each side and have a beautiful radius. In order to make the clip stop at the exact same place and to have a beautiful radius, I used the same plunge grinding platen that I used for the plunge grinds on the blade earlier. After grinding the flat spine area of the clip, I wanna do a little bit of hand sanding before I move on to grinding in the rest of the clip. And that's just to keep everything as crisp as possible. I'm done with the spine part of the clip. It's now time to focus on the radius curved part of the clip. This really shows why this kind of clip is so much work. I basically had to grind in two clips just on this one knife. Working on the curved part of the clip was a lot less work though than the straight area and it didn't take me very long at all to get it ground and move on to hand sanding it. And that is as far as I'm gonna take the blade until after the handle is complete. The entire blade is sanded to 600 grit and it's ready for the guard and handle to be fit up next. I will see you in the next video. May the forge be with you. Bye-bye.